Well, here's <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. The the salesmen dupe me all the time, right? So it's like they're like, all right, so we can we can finance this car for you. You know, the normal four or five years. It's gonna be uh, seven hundred and eighty nine dollars a month. So, whoa, 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 I'll put a thousand more dollars down. How about that? Okay, that'll bring us down to seven hundred and fifty dollars a month. So, okay, that's not gonna work either. That's a lot. So what else can we do? And they go to the back and they come out like, all right, listen, we'll raise the interest rate a couple, you know, we'll raise like 12, 13%, right? And we'll stretch it out over the next 20 years. You say you pay, you know, 150 bucks a month for the next 10 years. My like, hey, deal, $150? What? Sounds like a good deal to me. Every time, they get me every time, Scott. They, they throw out this big number and then they just come back and like, you know what? No, we'll, we'll cut that in half and uh, you just, you know, you'll be paying for the rest of your life, but it won't cost you as much per month. And you know what? Yeah, but you're going to be upside down in that car That's okay. forever. That's okay. It's okay. He's a good lover. Okay. Well, good luck trading out of it. Thank you. So wait, so you have your car for the next 20 years? That's what it seems like. I don't, I don't even really look at the numbers. I just tell them, uh, you know, if they say, you know, $150 a month, $200 a month, I say, okay, that's fine. I don't care how long. So you negotiate the monthly uh, payments rather than the total price. So they're, they'll they'll exactly. they'll extend that as long as uh, yeah that, yeah ten years uh, yeah, 150 whatever bucks a month no big deal. Yeah, in a couple of years I'll trade it back in and then I'll just tack whatever I owe onto the next car. I'll never, I'll never see that again. <laughs> oh my god! I've been doing that for I've, I've been doing that for six years. This car actually is the price of a Lamborghini. And now it's time for the No New Friends podcast with Scott, Mary, and Chris. That's right. You are listening to the No New Friends podcast, voted number one by our friends and family. We are the podcast for adults who like to laugh at adulting. Please connect with us on the Facebook, the Instagram, the YouTube, the Twitter, the TikTok. Just visit our website, no new friends podcast. Dot com. While you're there, check out our sweet merchandise and join our Patreon, our clubhouse, and become a Friends with Benefits. By now, the Best of Orlando list is up. Please vote for us. We're a finalist, hopefully, because we're recording this before the list actually comes up, but we're, hopefully we're a finalist for the Best Local Podcast under the category Local Notables, so just click on that. Vote No New Friends Podcast. My name is Scott. I am the host with me, as always, my co-host. I'm an architect for her pain. Not only is she the queen of the sun rail, but she is the queen of quarantine, Mary. Hey. And our other co-host. He's a LinkedIn expert, so if you need advice, just hit him up. He is also our scumbag reselling hoarder himself, Chris. My name is Jim, but most people call me Jim. Oh. Huh. This one was for our guest today, actually. Oh, this. okay. So Who this claims- is for our guest. He knows every line to this movie. Oh, okay, I know what movie it is just by you saying that. <laughs> Blazing Saddles. Yes. Oh, That's nice. Correct. Okay. It's Gene Wilder. Okay, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Joining us tonight from the Diz His podcast once again, you know him as Diz His Red Beard. Alex is back. Alex, how you doing tonight, man? I'm doing pretty good. So I'm, ex- I'm excited to have Alex on because Alex is, is what I would call a super fan. Like Chris, uh, before he was a host on Diz His, was a super fan of Diz His. I'm a d- super fan of Diz His. Jared's a super fan of Diz His. You know, we know the inside jokes. We know what they talk about. Alex is like a super fan of No New Friends podcast. So he's got some, he, he's been taking some notes and and some questions that he has for us and and probably questions that you guys have at home, our, our other listeners. So we've got we've got an exciting show we're going to talk about abby's birthday party today which i can't wait to talk about we're going to talk about uh an anxiety situation that i had at work so now i have more in common with mary and chris than i realize mary's driving right now so uh so she's uh she's mary on the go it sounds like a uh a fast food item uh mary on the go i am fast food item i'm just awful for you (laughs) accurate (laughs) She's still a piece of garbage. No, I'm still a piece of garbage. <laughs> All right, Alex, without further ado, let's go. I want to hear what you got What you got to say. Well, first, yes, I am a fan of New New Friends, because if you listen to the latest Diz His episode, our intro ends with Show Me Your Feet, which is a direct quote from <laughs> No New Friends. Yes, it is. Uh, so I have a few things. Uh, my first, I have a beef with Scott. Okay. Uh, because he said downsizing, <laughs> was, downsizing was a garbage movie. It is a garbage movie. It is a garbage movie. movie. It's, it's, not, it's a good movie. That movie's it's, good. It's a it's, good movie. It's a it, great it, concept. It's a great concept. It's a great concept that is so 
poorly executed. It just gets boring. It, and it, it, it lasted a little too long. They could have cut out a good part of it. They did. It was a little long and drawn out. But I think the the idea of a little civilization in order to uh, help world hunger was a great idea. And then less, the very ending was definitely a little much. But uh, I still think it was in- very interesting and fun. It's it's interesting and it's fun and you're saying everything that I think but but I just think it's garbage because <laughs> such a cool concept such a cool concept with you know it, solving world hunger and solving everything I wanted I wanted it to be more of a fun movie where you know he get he lives in this mansion in this little place and all these fun things happen I didn't I didn't expect it to be so depressing and I think that's what it was it was just depressing and it went on forever Scott, well, I have to yeah. understand how you go from saying, yes, it was interesting and it was fun and it was this, but it was a piece of garbage. I don't know. Where the wording is the happen? issue. The wording is the issue. Maybe the wording is the issue. It's it was Matt Damon. What do you expect? He's not he's not a fun actor. He's he's in a lot of depressing movies. I think uh we ran a zoo or we own a zoo. we live in a zoo. What, what's the <laughs> we have a yeah. zoo the yes. zoo movie. Yes. I thought was very fun and very fantastic, it was, it and was, I love Scarlett if Johansson. At, if you look at if you look at all of his movies, he he likes those depressing movies. I thought I thought he was brilliant in uh, Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> he was. That's true. <laughs> he was. He was good at that. Um, another thing I have an issue with is I think all of you said this that you guys hate sweet tea. No, yeah, what? no, I love sweet tea. Come on, man. Okay. I, I didn't say like that it. I. I didn't say I hated it. Hate is a very mm. strong word, sir. Pretty sure um, you guys said you hated no, it. No, no, no. That was I, the Ryan okay, episode. No, I. That prefer, was the Ryan episode. I prefer. Okay, we were Ryan that hated it. Tea. It's actually best if you unsweetened put tea. Vodka you mean water? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Like what? <laughs> How do you live in Florida? Don't like sweet tea. It's amazing. To me, sweet tea or unsweet tea or any type of no, tea. You can't just... say sweet tea and unsweet tea together. They're two different things. Okay. Well, sweet tea it tastes like flavored urine. Is, is what, what was the last uh, time dude. you had flavored urine? And why is that? I need to get some color? of your urine because the urine's delicious. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sir, I think you may have diabetes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, hey, Mary, this is the first time we're in an episode together. Oh, oh, that's hi. not true. It's weird. Oh, that's my God. not true. Okay. Ameri- no American well, Idol bust. So now they know that oh, uh, we? we're not the same person. We've never Joe actually been seated in the same room together. But now here we are. Mary was on that one, Chris? I thought yes. Joe was on no, that one. No, I was not on Joe that. was on that one. Yeah. Joe Mary, was on. you were on. No, Mary, you were on American Idol bust. I don't remember. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't and, think and we I know, were no new friends together, though. I had that thinking idea. Alex was definitely on uh, American Idol Bust. Yes, I was. I think it was me and Joe. No, because you you and Joe have never been on an episode together. Yes, we have. Really? Well, the the Rubik's Cube, the Survivor in the Rubik's Cube, when you guys took over. Yeah. Anyways, uh, moving on to other things. I have uh, I have four more <laughs> things on my list, so let's go let's go fast. So I also owned a Razer phone in high in high school. I owned a Red oh, wow. that played MP3s. I was the shit. I'm not I'm not lying. You know. Wait, wait. <laughs> so you, did you have family. the Miami Ink one with like the dragon on it? Is that what you're talking no, about? Just, oh, okay. No, it was just red, and okay. I could I could load MP3s on it and oh, play yeah. it to, with my headphones. So oh, yeah, like, so that was my next question. So did you have the special headphones that plugged into the to the razor? Because they didn't have a headphone jack. Were they special? They had to be. Then, yes, yes, there I was did. no headphone jack. I didn't know if you were one of those assholes about that the their music was out loud. <laughs> I listen to music at school all the time. Wow. That's... Do you remember when we used to have to like download our ringtones or like you had to like yeah. buy the ringtone on a extra. card or something? Yeah. And and the like the first the first version of ringtones were like in 8-bit. So like you like got lucky if you guessed the song because it just sounded terrible. <laughs> yes, you're so right. Yes. <laughs> My first ever ringtone that I purchased was 8-bit. It was the Pink Panther theme. I never watched the Pink Panther in my life. I don't what know why I picked that? that. I was in fifth grade. Because <laughs> it's a great melody. Oh, God. If you could not it's say you were melody. in fifth grade, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> then I bought the Rocky theme song, but it was only like the first seven seconds of the Rocky yes. theme song. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I had the Rocky theme song. I had uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, gosh, what else did I have? I definitely had Rocky. 
for sure. That's so funny. I had white snakes. Here I go again. What else you uh, got, Alex? Another thing is you guys were talking about, Mary was telling a story about fingerprinting at the UPS store. Oh, my God. How did <laughs> and, this come uh, back? I actually used to work at the UPS store, and I used to do fingerprinting. Did you walk away from people so, and so just leave them there? So you could have fingerprinted Mary at the UPS store. Oh, I would have. I would have fingerprinted her so hard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's... Sir. <laughs> so fingerprinting. She was saying how she had to like move her fingers. That's, that's called rock and rolling. There's a there's a term for it. So you rock to the left and you roll to the right. That is because not you have to what get the he told whole me. finger. And he told uh, me. yeah, old people are terrible for fingerprinting. If old ladies come in. I'm there for 15 minutes trying to get them to fingerprint. You have to pull out some like some uh, hand wipes to wipe their fingers to get it moist <laughs> because they have no like Blech. I guess they have nothing on their fingers, so they're not picking anything up. Young people are easier, old people are hard. <laughs> usually, usually the other way around. I just yeah, yeah no. I was gonna say well, well they do have blue pills for that. I have questions though, <laughs> Alex. Did you Go ever ahead. leave someone alone to do it by themselves? No, 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 never. Never did I do that. I was too good at my job. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, because I almost had but, a no, heart we, attack. I mean, we, yeah. No, we did a lot of them. Like, I mean, we got that fingerprint machine in there, and my second job became doing fingerprints. That's funny. Was there someone? Um, hold on, Scott. Wait. Was there someone assigned for the fingerprinting, or was it just whoever no. was working? It was just whoever was available at the time. Like, did people like doing it, or were they like, oh, man, not another fingerprinting? Me and the one other guy who worked there didn't really care. Well, you're, so, you're an all-star now would you say worker. I mean, hey, so if people are going to get their fingerprints for school like you, right? For nursing. Mm-hmm. Dude, t- young 20-year-old girls coming in and get fingerprints? Yeah, <laughs> let me put my hand on top of yours. <laughs> <laughs> let me consent. assist that rock and roll. <laughs> my doctor actually uh, used the same terminology as that, Alex. It's a little scary. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> I could just see Alex like putting on his glove with the glove with the with the big no strap. gloves. You ready Raw to get dogging. fingerprinted? <laughs> oh, okay. So, somebody, they, the little bell goes off when somebody walks in the door, and then you just hear uh here I'm here for finger- fingerprinting. Alex, I got it from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Jumps over the uh, counter. We're out of gloves. <laughs> Actually, for for the fingerprint, they had to come behind the counter. You came from uh, behind. Really, they had to come b- behind. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Here we go. Very intimate. <laughs> Maybe you should use some gloves then. Good lord. And then my last story is: you guys are talking about uh, getting cars at dealerships, and yeah. uh, one of the best stories I have that actually has to do with my wife quite a bit is we had to go get a new car, and we did the. My wife was very good at negotiation. Like you, Scott, I'm not really helpful in negotiation. I kind of, I don't know, I'm very casual and laid back. Which and surprises she, me about you because you're like the one that doesn't want to spend money. Right. So right. I could see you like trying to lowball as, 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 or get, as, get, get negotiation as low as possible. Well, I was already beyond because I want to get a used car and she wants to get a new one. So I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm out of it. It's you. It's your baby. You're dealing with it. <laughs> and she's very uh, aggressive with her dealing. So we at one point left the dealership and walked out to our car. We had our doors open and we were standing between the door and the car and the guy was following us and talking to us the whole time. And my wife is like, you give us, she had already talked to you about a deal. She already figured out how much you want to pay monthly. And they said it was kind of doable. And then they came back and said it wasn't. And we were in the car talking to the guy and he followed us all the way to the parking lot. And she was like, give me the deal I want or I'm leaving. And they're like, and they sat there and like, okay, let's do it. And I went back inside and it's filled with paperwork. Wow. And we got the we got the car for the monthly payment we wanted. Nice. Yeah. So some, you have to just stand your ground because we did it again. She was pregnant. We were getting a new car, and she's mm-hmm. like, "I've been here for two hours. I'm done with this process. Give me the car for this price, or we're leaving and looking somewhere else because we don't have to do this right now. We have a whole another month." And they're like, "Okay, let's do it then." See, Alex, here's the problem. I know that we can get to that point, but my wife will not make the first move. She like she wants them. It's very nerve wracking because she's sitting there going, no, no, no. You give me your best offer. And they're like, well, no, we want to hear what you were looking for. And she's yeah. like, no, I want to hear what you're. And it's we couldn't even get to the first part because they're arguing about who gets the first word. Oh, OK. Yeah. No, she came with a price point in mind because of, you know, what we could afford and was like, right. this is what we're doing. And like, you know, they'd be like, could you could you do uh, 50 dollars more? I'm like, yeah. She's like, you shut your mouth. No, we cannot. <laughs> Oh, I, there boy. was yeah, zero uh, 
I, I did zero haggling. Like I, when I bought blueberry, I walked onto the lot and I was like, I like that blue one. Where do I sign, sir? I don't You said know. you walked, right? Yeah, I just, I didn't have a car. I no, that's haggling all right. Yeah, I was like, I need a car, please. Uh, I'll take that one. Um, I actually don't even and know what it? I've paid for this car. I'm going to be honest. I don't even know what it costs, but it works. Was it sticker price? I don't know. Because it was sticker price, then they were very happy when you walked away. I don't even know right. what I Yeah, paid. well, she didn't negotiate. She said, I'd like that car. Uh, I'll take it. Basically. Just what? where do I sign? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I just, I actually just got a car the other day. And oh, yeah. I, I get duped yeah, That is time. not a car. That's a machine. That <laughs> thing is like, fancy. you know, Michael Bay called. He wants his Transformer back. <laughs> but, um, it's, he's a good lover, too. Um, <laughs> so there's no... <laughs> We'll save that for the after show. So Diz his must be doing very well uh, for, for you, Chris. I did not sign off on this payment. Well, well, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. The the salesman duped me all the time, right? So it's like they're like, all right, so we can we can finance this car for you. You know, the normal four or five years. It's going to be uh, seven hundred and eighty nine dollars a month. It's like, whoa, 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 you know, you know, can't we? I'll put a thousand more dollars down. How about that? Okay, okay that'll bring us down to seven hundred and fifty dollars a month. So, okay, that's not going to work either. That's a lot. So what else can we do? They go to the back and they come out like, all right, listen, we'll raise the interest rate a couple, you know, we'll raise like 12, 13%, right? And we'll stretch it out over the next 20 years. You say you pay, you know, 150 bucks a month for the next 10 years. I'm like, hey, deal, $150? What? Sounds like a good deal to me. Every time. They get me every time, Scott. They they throw out this big number and then they just come back and like, you know what? No, we'll, we'll cut that in half and uh, you just, you know, you'll be paying for the rest of your life, but it won't cost you as much per month. And you know what? Yeah, but you're going to be upside down in that car That's okay. forever. That's okay. It's okay. He's a good lover. Okay. Well, good luck trading out of it. Thank you. So wait, so you have your car for the next 20 years? That's what it seems like. I haven't gotten the, um, I don't, I don't even really look at the numbers. I just tell them, uh, you know, if they say, you know, $150 a month, $200 a month, I say, okay, that's fine. I don't care how long. So you negotiate the monthly uh, payments rather than the total price. So they're, they'll they'll exactly. they'll extend that as long as uh, yeah uh, yeah ten years uh, yeah, hundred fifty bucks a month no big deal. Yeah, in a couple of years I'll trade it back in and then they'll just tack whatever I owe onto the next car. I don't know, I'll never see that again. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I've been doing that for I've, I've been doing that for six years. This car actually is the price of a Lamborghini because of all the other cars that I haven't paid off. Yeah. And yeah, did you trade your car in or did you return it? Because like you owe so much more money on it, we just tack it on. <laughs> this is why Chris is in crippling credit card debt because he just he takes one credit card to pay off the other credit card. Yeah. and just keeps rolling that over. He's like, I have a nice car. Do I have money? No, but I have a no. nice car. Oh, well, my monthly He's, income uh... looks good. <laughs> just don't look at my debt. <laughs> Can't Hopefully take it with you. Try applying for a house soon. That's why I'm gonna have a lot of kids so I, they can I can just just distribute my <laughs> shut up Alex uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're gonna take a quick break <laughs> before we dive deeper into this. And why is that funny? Why why is uh, at least you're not buying a house funny, Chris? Well, I'll tell you what. A lot of cabin room in this car, Scott. We don't need a house. <laughs> I was actually looking up mattresses that blow up that will fit in the, the length of the car. My my uh my my mortgage writer uh or underwriter or whatever they're called uh, yeah. we actually had him on uh, an episode the uh, the one about the fall sense or whatever Patrick from uh, Movement Mortgage anyway he was telling me a story when we were buying our house he's like yeah you know they're 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 trying to buy a house and all that and they got like the preliminary paperwork done and then some and then the idiot buys a car which changes everything <laughs> like you don't oh buy gosh. the car until after the, the house is you know bought. Yeah. Well, I figured I'd buy it before, so, you know, get that out of the way, you know? How long are you waiting for this car? You waited for, like, what, four months? Six months. Wow. Yeah. Almost a pregnancy term. Almost. I'm telling you. <laughs> Just as expensive. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, you can spread it out. I'm going to I'm gonna negotiate at the emergency room when they deliver. Like, listen, do I have to pay this $5,000 here? Or can I just spread it over the next 30 years? Just tie this into my mortgage somehow? You do spread it over 30 <laughs> years. It's called having kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah can I take right. this onto my car payment? <laughs> <laughs> You go for the second child. I'm going to turn this one in. Trade it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we we definitely need to have a financial advisor on one episode uh, just to kind of help Chris out uh, because I'm very concerned I'm that uh, he's going to be coming to me for money soon. Anyway, you're listening to the No New Friends podcast. We'll be right back. Listen to Keeping the Towel with Aunt Boogie on SoundCloud, Anchor.fm, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. 
A new episode is dropped every first and third week of every month. Once again, keeping the towel with Aunt Boogie. Wipe the blood, wipe the sweat, wipe the tears. But whatever you do, don't throw in your towel. Hey everyone, it's Dane from Big Beautiful Diz. If you're not familiar with my channel already, I do videos about theme parks. Historical videos, interviews with people from the theme park community, or people that have worked in or with a theme park. I give my opinions, plus I review the latest Disney, Marvel, or Pixar movie. So head over to youtube.com slash C slash Big Beautiful Diz and hit that red subscribe button. I'll see you over there, everyone. Hi, this is comedian Miguel Colon, and you're listening to the No New Friends podcast. Welcome back to the No New Friends podcast with Scott, Mary, and Chris, and special guest this evening from the Diz His podcast, Diz His Red Beard, Alex. Diz His Red Beard, Alex. That's kind of a tongue twister. I'm, I'm not going to say that anymore. So a couple weeks ago, and I've been kind of holding on to this story a little bit, waiting until we're all here, and it's not a milestone episode, but we had uh, Abby's 10th birthday. Abby, my daughter, obviously. A couple things happened. One, we ordered this massive... Uh, you know, bounce house and slide. Nice. Uh, Alex, have, how old are your kids? Have you, have you thrown these big parties yet? This weekend, my kids are turning five and three. Oh, wow. Okay. And I, I know Mary, you've had some pretty big birthday parties for your kids, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we, we ordered this, it was a 50 foot bounce house with slide, uh, Spider-Man, because that was the only one that they had. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was really badass. but we didn't measure the yard. Okay, oh, but I'm thinking, okay, 50 feet, no big deal. We've got this. Uh, we, we, we had a pretty large one last, last time. We also ordered a tent because last time it was just so freaking hot. So freaking hot. So the, the most brilliant thing that Rachel could have done is leave me in charge of the situation. She's at work. I'm home when they come to deliver this behemoth of party events. So they, they come into the backyard and they're like, okay, where, where do you want this? Where do you want that? And I'm like, we want the tent here. We want the bounce house here. They're like, yeah, that's not going to work. You were limited by geography. We were limited by geography uh, and maybe some geometry as well. Those trees did not help you. We'll get to the trees. <laughs> so, oh, God. so, so they're, they're like, okay, we can do it this way, but the end of it is going to, be in your neighbor's yard about 15 feet. I'm like, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, that, really? That's just not going to work. That wouldn't work. What they wouldn't be okay with that. Jo- yeah. What kind of killjoy neighbor would be like, no, 10 year old birthday party? Absolutely not. The thing is, they probably would have been okay with it because it's my nice neighbors and oh, okay. they, they would have understood. But I, I just didn't want, I didn't want these kids running through this neighbor's yard and all that. And, and so I'm like, no, that's not going to work. And they're like, okay, well, here's here's the alternatives. We can split this into two different houses now because it was two houses combined it into one. The first part had the obstacle course. The second part had the water slide. So I'm like, well, I really don't want to do that, but I guess I guess that's what we have to do. So I'm trying to call my wife and say, hey, what do you think about this? And she's like, you know, she's busy. She's got she's got an important job, okay. And I'm bothering her with, you know, should we do this? Should we do this? And at one point, she thought I said the slide won't fit in the tent. And she calls me and she's like, we're not putting the slide in the fence or it, we're not putting the slide in the tent. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not what I said. I'm like, we can't fit the slide and the tent and not in. So she's like, I don't know, just figure it out. Like, just figure it out. And I said, well, this 20 by 20 tent is the problem. She's like, well, that's the I, I ordered a 10 by 20 tent. And I'm oh. like, well, so I go to the guys and I'm like, hey, look, you got the wrong tent. She ordered the 10 by 20. And uh, they're like, no, I don't think so. So I'm going through my invoice. No, no, no. We ordered the 20 by 20. Oh, so yeah. none of this is working out. Like I, I'm pretty much I'm convinced that my wife is going to divorce me over the amount of times I'm calling her to ask her questions. Because Alex, I, I don't know about you. I'm yeah. incapable of making decisions. I'm not incapable of making decisions, but I'm capable of figuring out if this decision would be okay with my wife or not. Right. Yes. So it's like, yes. it's like I could make, if it's just me, I could figure it out, but I can't just figure it out for myself. I did figure it out for her too. And she thinks things way different than me. And of if course. I just choose the wrong thing, then I'm in trouble. 
Exactly. Yes. No, exactly. That's the stress of, of so it's like, it's like if it was just up to me and she was like a roll the flow kind of person, I could figure it out because right. she's not that kind of person. I have it's, to double check with her on everything. Yep. It's called men's suffrage. And that's why we celebrate uh man flu awareness yeah. month, Every January. 12, 12 months out of the year. I thought it was January and we decided. We extended it. Uh, Chris it talked about that last it's, week. It's every, it's every month. It's every, every month. Yep. Because we deserve it. COVID's over. This um, is the new pandemic. <laughs> 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 finally I'm, I'm i'm looking at this and i'm like okay how much clearance do we need and they show me and i'm like okay so i think i have a solution here so i've got this i've got a gigantic mango tree in my yard and i've got a gigantic peach tree in my yard so i'm like well what if i cut some of these limbs off this peach tree and they're like <laughs> that could work so I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, Clean let me, the, oh God, no, let me, no. let me look in my garage to see what I have. Okay. <laughs> so first thing I'm, I'm getting these huge, like garden shears. Oh my and gosh. These are not like small branches. The, you know, the, they're probably like, I don't know, three inch diameter branches. Yeah. Like they're, they're huge. You need a handsaw or you need a Ryobi saw. Right. So the, the problem is I don't have a ladder. I don't have like a, a, a large Ooh, step. Gosh. So, and these are high branches that I have to go for. Luckily, luckily, f like a year ago, we bought this tool at Lowe's that we've never used. And it's one of those like extendable things so you can saw branches. A pole saw. A pole saw, yes. So I'm there in my Crocs and socks pole sawing a peach tree so that they can fit in this damn <laughs> tent so they can fit in the, the bounce house. And I'm just doing it as quick as possible because now I'm getting pissed. I'm more concerned about who makes an impulse purchase of a pole saw. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> it wasn't an impulse. We were, you know, we were into, uh, there was one weekend where we were into doing yard work and Rachel's like, we need this pole saw. We hadn't used it. I had to take it out of the packaging to cut this peach tree apart, whose only crime was its location. So, I, you know, I'm trying to saw this thing as quickly as possible. Um, because I, I need them to fit this tent in before my wife gets home because my wife is going to kill me. <laughs> and and I can't call her for direction anymore because like she's she's dealing with like important work things and doesn't have time for me uh, to, on this issue. So now I've got to get these gigantic branches. I mean, like this is like half the tree that I've cut down. So nice. It, here's the thing is I live like I'm backed up to like just swampland. Like there's nobody that lives behind me. I should have just thrown the, the branches over the back. Yes, yes. No, I carried them all the way to the front of the house. <laughs> I had the same situation. I just I just destroyed a tree. I actually sent you a picture of my yard. Uh, I bought a pole saw. I bought a very, very tall ladder because I have tr a tree hanging over my fence line into my pool. And uh, I just destroyed this tree and cut half of it. The, I mean, this branch was falling down off the tree and it, dragging on the ground as it fell. It was so tall. Right. And I was, had, I was on a, a tall ladder, you know, reaching for it. And it was such a long branch that when it came down, it dragged on the ground. Some of it hit my, my fence, actually, but it didn't damage the fence very much. And I did that all day. And I love my pole saw now. Me and my pole saw are best friends. Yeah, I, I love the pole saw. Uh, it, you know, it, it got the trick done. And, uh, and I'm, you know, we, we, they, they got the tent in. They got the thing set up. Uh, we learned that we don't need a 50-foot bounce house anymore the 32 foot will do just fine uh the tent was definitely a necessity because it was hot as balls that day it was just an, a tent just for you guys to sit under it was it, it, yeah for all the adults and stuff so like we had oh, the food okay. and the table all set up and you know it, just nice shaded area because it you know it's it's labor day weekend or memorial memorial day weekend and so it's thought, hot as hell i thought it was a tent that went over the the um flow no no, like, no no wow, no it's a really tall tent yeah, yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a tent for the bounce house. So now here's the thing: like we we just put it out on Facebook. Like all neighbors are welcome, whether oh, you have wow. kids or not. Everybody's welcome. Um, <laughs> and and it was like it, it was so it's pretty much a park event, but now at my house. Wow. So, so wore the fedora, wore wore the Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> so I had a ton of alcohol there, and and I got I got loaded, but I figured out a way to recreate pretty close uh the avocado the frozen avocado margarita from epcot i had been working on it the whole week leading up to this birthday party so that i could serve it at this birthday party 
you know, so I, because I wanted to be, I want to be the most popular person in my neighborhood and not in a creepy way. So I made this, made this drink and all that. And, and I distributed it to everybody and they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is fantastic. And a lot of compliments. Everything that I wanted was perfect. So I'm still, <laughs> I'm still drinking. Well, about an hour later, they're like, Hey, can you make more of those, uh, frozen margaritas? And I'm like, uh, sure. So Alex, I became the Swedish chef of uh, bartending. I'm just with my <laughs> just you know throwing stuff together. Uh, I broke my blender, broke the blender. Uh, it, a big mess everywhere because I didn't close it all the way, so it you know kind of exploded. It wasn't your first and time then, uh, either. Yeah, it's a, that's now a pattern for you. <laughs> yeah. So so now so I pour it for for everybody. Everybody loved it. Well, I'm drunk as balls right now. I just wander down the street in my neighborhood, passing out frozen avocado margaritas <laughs> to different neighbors, just just knocking on their doors. Would you like a frozen margarita? Coincidentally, it was the same time that everybody else that was at the party was cleaning up. So by the time I got back to the house, uh, everything was cleaned up and done, and I didn't have to worry about a thing. Oh, wow. You should buy one of those carts, the carts that keeps things cold, and you just walk around your neighborhood giving out free drinks yeah man you could be like the piragua guy from uh in the heights you'd be lin-manuel miranda yeah. <laughs> right i i can only imagine what my neighbors were thinking of me as i'm just drunkenly wandering through the neighborhood passing out drinks you know they think they're think that's on that's on uh what's the term that's on not par that's on brand on brand, yeah, that was very on brand for me. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any funny birthday party stories, Alex? Is this kind of the first big one that you're throwing this weekend, or have you have you kind of done one? That did this isn't before. This is my wife always makes a big deal of birthday parties, and but we haven't done anything because they're only five and three, so they don't really have friends yet. Um, so we didn't really. It's just family coming over. I barbecue, and it's just family, and we just open gifts and hang out all day, and uh, we would go swimming, but my pool is drained right now because i had to clean it since uh winter so uh no not not my big of a deal i will eventually because i talked to chris about this because i got his advice because him and his sister are born really close to each other in uh days and my daughter and son are one day apart and uh so in the future they will have combined birthdays and i imagine we will make a big deal out of it get floats eventually and all that jazz yeah, we were we were like uh, you know one fire breather away from a really ridiculous birthday party. You know, elephants and and uh, trapeze artists and all that. I, I'm sure ne that's probably next year. Yeah, next time you should talk to the community and see if you can use the open space. Right. Yeah. Be because cool, right? eventually we're going to be putting in a pool. So like once once we start construction on that, bounce house parties are over. But then we'll have yeah. a pool, so that's fine. Yeah. Chris, um, you're 12. Tell us about the last birthday party you went to. So, oh man, dude, it's been a while to kind of think of it because of, uh, well, I, I don't know where, what, what you guys, uh, you know, being halfway across the country, there was this pandemic that happened for the last couple of years. So a lot of things. Stopped. Was it What's really? That? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll print out some, uh, some Wikipedia articles for you guys. <laughs> yeah. The news please. has traveled there yet. But so I don't, man, the last birthday party I've been to, it's a really good question. But when I was younger, my parents used to throw us some really good parties. And like Alex said, my sister and I, we both, um, we both had joint birthday parties, so she'd get the big slide, and pro tip, don't put water on the slide, because very, very dangerous, actually, surprisingly. Uh, <laughs> not safe. Yeah, not safe. But um, if it's, there's no water, how do you slide down? Um, it's just, it's just canola oil, plastic. actually. No, no, it was pledge, it was pledge, it was pledge. Just spray some pledge on that bad boy. Uh, and also, don't let a 400-pound man uh, go on the slide, for obvious reasons oh, that we probably right. weren't thinking about. Um, our, our house, our house is actually now come to think of it. We, it was like, um, you know, what was that? Uh, what was that? Oh gosh, I can't think of it. What was the action park action park in New Jersey? Oh yes. yeah. Class yeah, action yeah, yeah, yeah. park. Yeah. I guess, I guess whatever they were drinking is in the same water we were drinking up here in Jersey because we had <laughs> Jersey uh, water. Yeah. We had yeah, some Jersey water <laughs> tooth go through their lip on the water slide. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it wasn't at water slide. It, it specifically said, do not put water on the slide. And we, we watered the slide. I mean, it was shaped like a, like a fire engine. Oh, you want to be, did they really expect us not to put water on it? <laughs> so, um, realized why we paid them handsomely not to, not to go to the police. And then there was one time where there was a, uh, we had a zip line going from our, 
from our uh, two trees, right? Oh my gosh! And um, this girl was was hanging on to it, and her mom forced her to go on it. She did not want to go on. It's pretty scary. Um, okay. I mean, it was you know ten feet in the air. We're like what three feet at the time. It's pretty high. So she's holding on to her legs as she goes. She she lets go and she falls, and then her arm just looked like a banana after she hit the ground. So that oh was my cool gosh. too. Yeah, so it was like class action park over here at the uh, <laughs> at, at our household. But a lot of good memories were made. No, it was a lot of fun. I do miss those times. It was a really birthday parties were always fun because you you see all those people that you'd see once a year that uh you always like trying to make plans with or just like you, you make those plans with those people n- knowing that you're you really don't want to see them. But so these birthday parties were a good you know chance that you could bring everyone that you don't want to see uh privately for hours at a time into a big gathering so you can kind of pay them 10 minutes and then keep going to the next person that was my favorite thing about birthday parties yeah that's cool i have to share my birthday with jesus actually that's historian historically inaccurate so oh i was gonna say it's your birthday in in eastern (laughs) eastern Easter. (laughs) no he died in on easter or no he he came back to life on easter he came back to life he became zombie jesus on easter second birthday i i held for uh, for laughter and i didn't get it so uh on that note (laughs) (laughs) thank you you're listening you're listening to the no new friends podcast we'll be right back Lizard people, the moon landing, birds aren't real. Hi, this is Chris from the No New Friends podcast, and if you're hearing this message, you were selected to join the resistance. For as low as $1 a month, join our Patreon and help us uncover the truth. Upon joining us, you will be invited to our secret Discord, where we help spread these truths. You will be invited to watch our live recordings where the government cannot interfere. For more information, please send a messenger pigeon to my underground bunker or visit us at www.nonewfriendspodcast.com. This message will self-destruct in three, two, one. This is the No New Friends Podcast, and I am Carlos Alberto Navarro, bro, listening to No New Friends Podcast, and I'm out, bro. Welcome back to the No New Friends podcast with Scott, Mary, and Chris. Uh, Mary, uh, Mary got dropped off the service plan or whatever, so she's gone. Uh, but Alex from the Diz His podcast is here. Now, Chris, you remember a couple weeks ago, we were talking about this candle put out by Goop. Yes. And, uh, and Gwyneth Paltrow. How could I smells forget? like my vagina. Yeah, the smells like my vagina candle. Well, I guess now there's a spinoff of this candle. Uh, did you hear about this at all? I actually um, have one with me right here, and I can tell you it doesn't, it it may, uh, first of all, smells delightful, Um, and I don't know, uh, I've never known a uh, a human uh, woman's parts to smell like this candle, and uh, it does kind of taste like one. (laughs) 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 So this is Gwyneth Paltrow and... Uh, Courtney Kardashian have uh, released as of June first. This smells like my pushy. Uh, uh, that's P O O S H Y. I think it, I think it's pushy. Oh, pushy, pushy, but it would be C H, not S H. So it has to be pushy, 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 pushy. Well, it's not as pushy. creative as we're making it. It's actually just their two companies mixed into one. Oh, is it really? Goop and Poosh. Well, for, where are they oh. coming up with these names, by the way? But where's the E come from? Uh, there's no E, actually. It's just a Y. It's a oh, I'm sorry, the Y. Um, Is it Poosh I, I think it's a spin on a derogatory term for a woman's vagina, uh, Alex. Poosh I know that you don't have a lot of um, uh, knowledge in this field, but um, <laughs> I'll send you some links. Says, says the guy who's been with the same girl since, uh, like, elementary <laughs> school. It was middle school. But... Uh, What's that? It was middle school. Homeschool. 
Middle school, okay. Yeah. But at this, he said homeschool. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. This is New no, that's, Jersey. That's why he knows his way this around. New Jersey. Yeah, I'm not in the yeah, not Jersey, the not South, Kentucky. Scott. <laughs> that's why he knows his way around. <laughs> oh my god, where are we going with this? So uh, it smells like my pushy. Yes, I see. It's goop uh, plus plus push, but it sounds like uh, something else. So I'm wondering if uh, magically scented.com will come out with that. <laughs> maybe I like maybe this. I should suggest it actually. Um, yeah, we'll get Joe to suggest it. We'll we'll just send well, the link and say, can you recreate this? But here's the thing. See, this is what they're missing, like the adult brands, and they don't have to market that on Diz His. They can market that on our show. You know, it could be, there like, you, go. you know, this smells like my swamp ass or, uh, you know, this smells yeah. like uh, my jock itch or, you know, just different fun, yeah. fun scents like that. The male pheromone. Yes. Yes. There you go. Uh, this smells like my farts. You know, there are mandals. Have you ever seen them? <laughs> Mandals, no. There, there are there oh, yeah, there yeah, are yeah. mandals. I'm pulling it up right now, and so super cute idea, right? Uh, man candles. It smells like yep. manly things. Um. Oh wow, actually, these ones aren't cute. I was thinking of the ones that are like cut grass. This one is um, right. country bumpkin, Guido, hipster, mountain man. Ooh, I have to check that one out. That one would probably smell like um, uneducated, middle-aged um, <laughs> Republican voters. <laughs> wow. So, in other pop culture news, sorry, uh, I just got distracted by scrolling down on this article. I'm just seeing this Cole Sprouse. Uh, you know, I, Cole Sprouse I, I, I was did from, see that as well. Yeah, the uh, he was from a Disney Channel show or whatever, but he was also also in Riverdale. So it, wasn't he in Big Daddy? Wasn't he the the kid in yes. Big Daddy? Yeah, him yeah his, he was. Yes. Mm -hmm. him, yeah. Okay, so there's a picture of him, and in the background is a reflection of his ass um, from the back. Now, whatever, uh, who cares? But why does he have the build of a woman? Huge ass. Huge like, ass. But he's got this hourglass figure. Yeah, he's got a right? nice body. Very slender. I don't know that it's slender. It's it's no. weird looking. He almost looks like Station from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey he, from behind. He is um he's got a dump truck, Alex. Dump truck. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just it's it's just so bizarre to me. When he walks backwards, is he has to him or put me? hazard lights. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I got back. <laughs> but okay, Alex, you are probably built proportionally. I'm looking at this. And I, I mean, he's got the body of a woman. Chris, am I am I am I wrong in saying this? a strong, independent woman who doesn't need a man? He he he, <laughs> he, he he's built, man. He is. Um, listen, listen. I'm straight, but listen. <laughs> Hips don't lie. I'm, I'm, hey, I didn't say it, you did. You got to see this picture. Well, this should this will be our. Uh, I can't. I don't have it anywhere. Be, it'll, it'll, I'm, afraid what, I'm afraid of what. I'll, I'll tell you what. This will probably be our cover art this week. <laughs> so just wait a week. <laughs> just wait a week, and you'll and you'll, you'll you'll see it. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it's impressive to say the least. It is. Um. It is very impressive. Yeah, okay. So what I don't understand is everybody's shaming Britney Spears for posting, uh, you know, some semi nudes on the Instagram. Why they should be giving him a hard time because the, he's <laughs> got no reason to be doing that and no business to be doing. Now, that. where did he post this? I'm going to need some more context here. Where did he post this? I, you know, I'm not. Oh sure. my god! I'm, it, it, Alex just sees it, right? <laughs> Is that not the weirdest looking man ever? I think it's the angle. I think he's leaning over. He has to be. That crack is so long. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look real. It, actually, he posted this on Instagram. It does it. It looks. It looks photoshopped. How's it even allowed? Did he blur it out? I mean, we need more information on this. Where's, where's Steve? It looks fake. It was posted to his main feed. Yeah, where is Steve the intern? Uh, he's got a Facebook. <laughs> uh, Facebook, and now he, you know, he, we don't hear from him anymore. <laughs> it's like his top half and a middle-aged woman's bottom. Right. Wait, yes. I'm actually seeing this uncensored for the first time, and I'm even more shocked by this. It's a, it's when he posted. He says, "Good morning to my publicity team." Wow. Emily, okay, this is Emily walking at the worst time ever. She is. <laughs> <laughs> because this is how it looks like. It's impressive, right? Well, ask her. I, I mean, you know, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it just looks weird. It's um, 
Yeah. Uh, Emily never <laughs> walks. Going Emily on never here? walks in during um, during recording, and this is the time that she chooses to walk in. When I have a, <laughs> when I have one of my childhood heroes or childhood, it's it's Cole Sprouse. <laughs> Ass so big. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Why is his ass so big? <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> That's what I said. Let me just uh, get something for later, real quick. Oh gosh, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing for later? Nothing. Nothing. Didn't screenshot. You didn't take a picture. So there's that. I'm never going to be able to get that out of my mind. I know. Right? And I'm not sure if I want and, to. <laughs> and and what it. It's what drew my attention to the article because I'm like, who? Like I, I'm seeing this 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 guy. Clearly, it's a guy taking a picture of himself uh, with no shirt on, and then in the background is what I think is a woman's reflection. And I'm like, this is very bizarre to me. I don't I don't understand what's happening here. But here we are. It's like the eighth wonder of the world. Or if there's eight, that's the ninth. Right. Exactly. All right, so we're almost going to wrap up the show, but uh, we've got a new, a new segment that we're going to try out, and um, Chris is going to give us his uh, his cliff notes of the episode. So, Chris, without further ado, here's Chris's cliff notes or cliff notes with Chris. All right, so there's a, few, there's a I have about a page full of some things we need to touch back on because they were just either breezed over too quick or brought up some um, some scars from the past. So, um, first things first, when Alex first comes on, you ask him how he's doing today. And I, as soon as he, he said that, he's like, yeah, pretty, pretty good. And that's just, first of all, a horrible answer. But there's really no good answer to that, because what is the correct answer to uh, how you're doing? Because there's always like a mutual understanding that the person asking doesn't really care about how that person's doing. And I need to realize that, because uh, I need to learn to stop asking people how they're doing when I'm in public. Because I always find the person that doesn't understand that I don't care. So it's like, you're the greeter at Walmart and I met you three steps ago. It's not that deep. I don't, I don't need to know how your, how your day is actually going. Then when we, uh, Al- right before Alex started asking his questions, uh, he said he had beef with Scott. And Scott should have looked angry, but he looked excited. I was kind of confused. Then I realized it was because Scott thought Alex said, I have beef for you. And that's why I was, that's why I was excited. <laughs> So <laughs> Alex was talking about sweet tea, which I love. And, you know, Scott compared it to sugared urine. Was that right? Sugared urine? Yeah. Started me a little bit because it started to connect some dots for me during this whole 2016 election, which we all remember very fondly. Uh, Scott would comment, you know, how you, like your friends comments pop up on your, your news feed. You can see them when they comment on random articles. Well, Scott's comment on all these, you know, Fox News articles bashing Trump. And then I, but I found it kind of weird when the article about the P tape came in, uh, came up because that was the one article that Scott didn't bash Trump on. Actually, I found the post. I found that I searched back for it. it was August 18th, 2016. Scott comments, quote, I don't believe this for a second. This sounds ridiculous. And then he replied to his own, own comment a couple hours later saying, on top of all this, even if there were a tape to exist, it can't be real. Can someone please link me the video so I can just laugh at it? And then uh, he replied to that <laughs> about three years later saying, anyone find a copy yet? It's probably so funny. Uh, and then said, hey, guys, checking back in. Uh, is it a hard copy? My address is and then gave his address, which was really weird. So Scott goes on to talk about uh, in our next segment about uh, his daughter's birthday. And um, you mentioned that when you called Rachel about the tent and slide not fitting that she got mad at you. And she wasn't actually mad. She was just caught so off guard hearing you tell her that something wouldn't fit in her backyard because you never really have that issue. <laughs> Now you try to take you, oh you try to take gosh. matters into your own hands. So you walk into your shed and look for tools, which I pro which the only thing I could imagine was like when your car doesn't work and you you like someone's like your first instinct is to pop the hood and just looking at the hood, you have no idea how that thing works. But you figure that if you just look at something long enough that something will fix itself. That's pro- that's that's what I thought when you were looking at power tools. <laughs> There's millions of poor people who actually have to do yard work on a daily basis, and Scott goes to Home Depot like it's fucking AC Moore and browses the aisles looking for hobbies to do on the weekend. <laughs> you talking about posting an open invite to your whole town for this birthday party? Last time, <laughs> last time I did that, I got the catalytic converter stolen off my car. But that's all right because I traded it in the next week anyway, so <laughs> I didn't care. It's the next person's problem. 
And what's this about you handing out drinks for free down your street? I had one guy in my town to ever do that. And if you have the same luck as him, you have a real shot at becoming America's dad. <laughs> Alex, Bill Cosby. He's talking about Bill Cosby. Oh, that America's dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, first, the, the OG American dad. We don't really talk about that anymore. That's uh, Cliff Notes with Chris. <laughs> nice job, Chris. That was really good. Uh, <laughs> that was funny. Hey, it's Alex from Diz His. You know me. You know Joe. You definitely know Chris. And you know Jen. Well, we're the host of Diz His, the Disney History Podcast. Every week we take one Disney subject and go over the history, as well as our insight on the subject. We talk about other Disney topics, as well as what's new in the news. You can find us on all podcast platforms, or go to our website, dizhiz.com. That's D-I-Z-H-I-Z dot com. And we're on all social media at dizhiz65. All right, guys, what do we got going on on Diz His this week? We, it's not the Royal Week, because it is you, Scott, myself, and Chris coming up. The boys are back in It's going to be the return town. to Oz. The boys return are to back Oz. in Oz. The, yeah. Oh, the boys are Which back is, in Oz. Oh, 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 that's fantastic. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Which is listed as a dark fantasy. And, you know, Scott brought this up to me, and I was like, oh, yeah, he keeps picking things that are, came out before Chris and Alex are born. And so um, I actually looked it up, and it did come out before I was born. Mm, it's like uh, 1985, that's, that's the truth. right? And 85, before Chris and I were actually born. Yeah. And uh, it's listed as a dark fantasy, and it looks at photos, and it is a dark fantasy. It, is, it will give you nightmares just looking at photos. And I, I can't believe it stars a young Feruza Bulk. Is that how you say her name? Uh, yeah. Uh, Vicky Valancourt from, uh, from uh, Waterboy. No, oh, yeah. And, and the one of the girls from Craft. Yeah. Same, oh same girls. God. Yeah, same girl. Guys, I'm really excited about girl. doing this one because this this was one of my favorite movies growing up, but but it's it is horrifying. I mean, I was watching the I was watching this movie today with Joe and Mary, and it is horrifying. Yeah. Now what what we found though, I and I and I looked it up today. Do you know there's over 40 Oz books? Like really? L. Frank Baum wrote now he didn't write all 40 of them. He wrote he wrote a lot of them, but a lot of the characters in in return to oz are from different books in the oz series because you've got ozma of oz uh TikTok of oz uh jack uh jack Pumpkinhead of oz and these are all characters that you're going to see in return to oz it's horrifying it's it's traumatic and it's so good yeah yeah my wife's seen it and i was like Hey, we have to watch this movie. She's like, oh, I'll watch that with you. And I was like, should we watch it with Emma? She's like, no, <laughs> not at all. I look forward to the inevitable uh, inevitable night terrors that I will get after this. And actually, fun oh. fact, Alex, Christina, Emily, and I are going to have a virtual double date to watch this. So we can all- That's uh, right. Virtual double date. Yes, we can all um, get scarred together. That's awesome. Yeah, we're going to- Are you going to order the same food yes, as us? I plan on it. We were t- t- talked about yeah, earlier. Although I don't plan on eating, eating together but... at nine at night, but- No, no, we're going to pr- already have been eating at five okay. o'clock, but- I thought it'd be, it'd be cool if we all eat the same dinner and then eat, watch a movie together. I'm so jealous. I, I wish I wish that I could join you guys for that, but uh, I've, I've got to work. But I'm, I'm really excited to, to discuss it with you next week. I'm really, really excited because it's, it's uh, first of all, it's the first time that I've been on when, we've, when we're doing a movie. I usually do attractions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm excited to, to dial into a movie and also to get some of the history from, from Alex because I know that there's a lot there that I don't even know. So I'm excited about it. Me too. You can connect with Diz His. That's Diz His 65 on all social media. Check out their website, dizhis.com. Their episodes release every Tuesday morning, streaming everywhere. Yeah, or become a Patreon. Or become a group Goof Troop member. Join their Patreon, right. and you can watch their live recordings, which are super fun as well, just like ours. And, well, most of our listeners are Diz His listeners anyway, and you're probably already Patreon right. members, so that's fine. Uh <laughs> If you'd like to connect with us or join our clubhouse, become a friends with benefits, check out our sweet merchandise. And, uh, you know, hopefully we got nominated for uh, Orlando Weekly Best of Orlando Competition, Best Local Podcast under the category Local Notable. So please 
vote for us on behalf of Mary, Chris, our guest, Alex. I'm Scott. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye.